What's going on guys? So I'm making a video today, a video about Dual Network. I'm just kidding, I'm not going to cover that because fuck, I hate Dual Network. <laughs> I'm like one of the few people that do. I just hate it. But anyways, no, we're going to talk about a video of things I did as a kid playing Yu-Gi-Oh. When I was, when Yu-Gi-Oh first, like, I wouldn't say it first came out, but it was like 2002, 2003, and 2004. Things I did around that age when I first got into Yu-Gi-Oh, and the stupid things I did. Uh, different mechanics, different types. So the first thing that I would say, and this is no particular order, so it's not like, oh, it's ranked number one is the worst or stupid thing, but first first thing I did as uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh is trying to play like the original first season of Yu-Gi-Oh, Duel Monsters. It's normal summoning Summon Skull without any tributes, not paying attention to the rules as in quick plays and stuff like that, but that's more of lack of knowledge than we were playing the game a specific way. But playing the game like that, like we thought, oh, some blue eyes just like Kaiba. Put blue eyes on the field because we're seven and eight years old. We didn't know any different. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people did that if they played when they were younger. I don't think it was just exclusive to me. I didn't even learn about tributing until I saw that season of Yu-Gi-Oh! And then we found out later because we actually took the time to read roll books when we got into our... When I was like a couple years later, like fourth, fifth, sixth grade. And then we actually started to play by the rules more. Still didn't play to the rules that I thought were 100% correct, but they were way more correct than when we first ever started dueling each other. So, yeah. Second thing I did was changed game types and mechanics. So I think everybody did this. I feel like people still do this now to some degree. But a big one that we used to do is um, I went to, I wouldn't call it a summer camp because it wasn't like I stayed there. It was something I went to just from like nine, I think it was like eight o'clock, 12 o'clock, we did activities. But the last like 45 minutes, I mean, first 45 minutes we were there or so, a lot of the kids would play Yu-Gi-Oh. So I'd play Yu-Gi-Oh and we would duel. And we dueled like with tribute and stuff, but like they said, the rules weren't still tight. But it was, it was pretty much the game we play now. It was tribute and we did strategies, just we weren't good at it. But we would duel and we would sometimes duel for cards, which is probably frowned upon because it was kind of like gambling in a way. But uh, we would duel for cards, but what I mean game types is, since our, since we didn't have a lot of time to duel, we would do 4,000 life point duels, which some people still do just like in the anime, but we didn't do it because we knew that 8,000 life points were the right amount, but we cut it in half because we didn't have a lot of time to duel, and sometimes duels would go out and we needed to finish games quick. But another way we would finish games quick and get it going and get the game dead is we did end turn drawing which was always something that me and my friends did, and we also extended it to those people at this uh, camp that I went to, is so, since we didn't have much time, okay, you draw first turn, and then when you end your turn, you draw a card. You can't, you don't get to use or anything, it's just you get, you draw a card, and you turn it speeds up the game. I always actually was fascinated with that mechanic in real Yu-Gi-Oh!, but with hand traps, like a huge thing now, I don't think it'd be, well, not huge, huge, but just how monster effects can be activated in the hand now compared to back to 2005, 2006, 2007, Probably wouldn't be good, but back then I always thought it was a cool mechanic. But it's something we would do as kids that was completely not right, completely against the rules, but 4,000 life points, draw a card at the end of your deck to speed up the duels. And like I said, we didn't go by the rules a lot, but I had an Arm Dragon deck that was pretty pimp, and uh, I had Arm Dragon level 10, which was like so rare. I remember ripping through like tons and tons and tons of that Chaz Princeton pack, and you could never get an Arm Dragon level 10. Finally, I traded somebody at that, at that camp for one, because I was like, dude, I have, like, Arm Dragon level 7, this deck rocks, gotta give me up number 10. And then I would sold it to somebody for, like, 30 bucks later. I don't even think it was worth that. It might have been, I don't know. But it was a nice, it was a cool card for the time. But it wasn't that great in the reality. But anyways, let's go on to the next stupid thing I would So, I've done a lot of things in Yu-Gi-Oh! that were probably dumb as a kid, but the one I can think of it a lot, and I wouldn't say it was dumb, because I was a kid being a kid, being creative. Um, I wouldn't make my own dual discs. I, a kid in my grade did it when I was in third grade. He showed me. He did a stupid. He made his dual disc kind of like uh, the original Kaiba one with the spinning disc. He didn't have the spinning part, just how the dual disc was kind of made. He used paper plates. And I was really, for some reason, fascinated by that. I'm not. You don't people. You don't know me, but I, I like to build things. I'm really fascinated by making things, and um, so it, it really took to me as an eight-year-old kid or nine-ish year old kid. And I just built tons of, I mean, I had this whole computer desk in my room, and I didn't have a computer at the time, uh, my own computer, and I just built dual discs. I mean, I made designs, I made ones that weren't off the game, I did cardboard, and it got better cardboard, I even made one that spun, like, in the show, it wasn't that great, and the lock-in system wasn't that great. They went from looking really crude and crappy to, like, holy crap, you made that out of cardboard? And then... You know, long, long behold, Konami, like 2000, late 2004, 2005, I think it was 2004, 
made a plastic dual disc, which kind of was shitty. They made better ones later, but still, it's like $35. I was like, geez, I mean, I had $35. I probably spent nothing, I probably, but I spent a crap ton of money on duct tape. I used so much duct tape. I even got it. My parents even got me a big roll of duct tape for Christmas because I made so many dual discs. It, it was huge. It's tons of fun. I wish I still had one. I think I threw everything away, even the built ones, or they might be in storage in our basement, but I really wish I could show one right now because there was one that I built pretty good. But me and my friends would, would duel with these dual discs too, and they were crude, but hey, we gave them field card slots. I mean, they were pretty real to the dual disc. And unlike that, in, I think it's Mattel who made it, might not be, where you can only put like 15 to like 20 cards in the graveyard slot in that first dual disc, and you couldn't even put card sleeves in them. Ours fit card sleeves, and you could put a whole deck's worth of cards in the graveyard slot, field card slot, and I'd even give mine the extra deck slot, and you barely used your extra deck back then. There were no synchros, there were no Xyz, all fusions, because we used to play E-Heroes back when the E-Heroes came out in GX. But yeah, guys, those are three somewhat stupid, somewhat dumb, but also funny things I did as a kid when I played Yu-Gi-Oh! Comment things down below that you did that were interesting or creative or even similar to me. Uh, if you played as a kid, not everybody did. People, some people didn't pick it up till later in their teens. I was one of those kids that was fortunate to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So yeah, let me know down below, and I'll see you later, guys. Peace. Damn. Uh. Yeah.